uh, has that uh, can you see the recording uh, option open just a minute yes the recording is starting okay so uh, uh, very good evening to one and all the participants and today's expert dr p Banerjee. let me uh, have the privilege of uh, introducing dr Banerjee. Uh, Dr. Banerjee, Dr. P. Banerjee, who happens to be my PhD supervisor. He's currently the visiting research consultant of the Department of Physics of uh, our university. We are very happy for that. Uh, Dr. Banerjee uh, has been professor of Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering in Amity School of Engineering and Technology Asset, Amity University, Noida, till December 2016. And uh, he joined National Physical Laboratory, New Delhi, in 1976 and had retired as Senior Deputy Director, uh, Scientist G in 2011. He served as the head of the Electric and Electronic Standard and Time and Frequency Section of National Physical Laboratory. Uh, Dr. P. Energy was Officiating Director of uh, National Physical Laboratory in 2009. He was a member of the seventh Indian Scientific Expedition very early uh, to Antarctica during 1987-88. I think many of the uh, people present here, students present here, they are not born at the time. Uh, he has more than 40 years experience in design and development of analog and digital circuits, microprocessor based system, electronic instrumentations, phase lock systems, time dissemination techniques via geostationary satellite, GPS, GLONASS and GNSS uh, system and generation of time scale, time measurement system and uh, analysis, etc. I'm happy to be uh, 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 introduce sir that he's one of the pioneers in GNSS research in India very early in 1990 mid 1990s so uh, he published some report which was the first reports from India on application of GPS and GLONASS. He received Young Scientist Award in 1984 from International Union of Radio Science RC. He was the chairman of Commission A on Electromagnetic Meteorology of RC uh, from 2007 to 2010, and he was the first one uh, to be the chairman from Asia. And Dr. Banerjee received the IET Hari Ramji Toshniwal Gold Medal in 2006, a very prestigious award, nationally competitive award. He was awarded Distinguished Visiting Professorship by Indian National Academy of Engineering, INAE, for engineering colleges under AICT during 2007-8. He's a fellow of IET. UK, formerly IEEE, IEEE, and senior member of IEEE USA, fellow IET, fellow Metrology Society of India, and fellow of International Union of Radio Science, RC. He has published more than 100 papers in Indian and international journals. He has given more than 60 invited talks in India and abroad, and presented 90 papers in conferences. He had four international patents and four national patents. So with this, uh, I'm very happy to, and uh, uh, rather, uh, it's my honor and privilege uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Banerjee. And on behalf of all the organizers, Department of Physics, the University of Bordovan, and it's, um, it's very important to, uh, interesting to know that uh, Dr. Banerjee is the alumnus of this university, the uh, University of Bordovan, uh, uh, on the uh, behalf of the organizers, and at the same time, on the behalf of the participants, we convey our sincere thanks and gratitude to Dr. Banerjee for sparing his time uh, to deliver his talk. And uh, secondly, uh, we will have the opportunity of meeting him next week on Monday uh, in the contact program. That means in the offline program, uh, the participants will have uh, the uh, opportunity to face-to-face -face meet him and to uh, discuss with him any uh, relevant issues. Okay, so with that introduction, and once again, very good evening to, uh, I welcome all the uh, participants. Uh, sir, uh, the floor is yours for your presentation. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, uh, now we hear you, you are, you are muted, sir. You are muted, sir. Your microphone is muted. Okay, so yes. now it's okay. Yes, uh, loud and clear, sir. Okay, so uh, first I would like to thanks um, Onindo, my student, and uh, the organizer to 
giving me opportunity to start the uh, to uh, express my experience in this field and let me start the uh, uh, The screen, has it come? Uh, no, sir. It came, then it disappeared. Uh, that is what I'm trying to see. Stop it. I don't know what happened. So now you select the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, in the bottom pin, you select the PowerPoint and it will appear. You come to the bottom. That is the entire screen. And then share. Now, sir, you come to the bottom. You come to the bottom and click on the PowerPoint icon. Uh, just below, just below. Yes, sir. No, I think uh, the below one. So many screen, how it is coming. Okay. I just I just tested it. Uh, you just stop, stop, stop sharing and resharing. And it present the new. And the window. I don't know what is happening. Uh, I'm going to window. Should I go to window? There the present is your, your entire screen. Uh, better to go into entire screen and then you simply uh, click is on it, the PowerPoint okay? icon. Is it okay? No, 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 no. Still now we cannot see. Sir, well, once again you have to share. Uh, your entire screen. And then you'll have to share. No, you have to start the sharing first. Uh, your screen is not being shared. But I'm not getting share in the beginning. Your entire screen window and tab present. Uh, your entire screen. Entire screen. And then your. But we cannot see your presentation window, sir. No, no, but I, I can see that it is not coming. No, then you have to start with present now at the center. Share your entire screen. Oh, let me see. Cancel. That is, there is entire screen and present now is not coming. But I don't know, it just came. Oh. Now your presentation is coming. You, 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 you click on the extreme bottom. In the extreme bottom, the PowerPoint icon. Extreme bottom. Yes, extreme bottom, I'm doing it. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, uh, that is not the extreme bottom one. 
the extreme bottom one. Um, you, you will see the same thing repeating. The extreme bottom one. You said that I'm going to then share the entire screen. Share the entire screen after that the extreme bottom one because you will see the uh, picture of your uh, where you are clicking that is actually picture, not the exact icon. Oh, or sir, no. can you can you can you can you email your presentation uh, right now? I can uh, share it from my. Okay, now uh, just to wait, just wait a minute, sir. Okay, so you you bring your cursor extreme bottom. No, I am making extreme bottom. No, no, here. no, 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 not that one, sir. Not that one. Okay, here. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I okay now. Uh, yes. Uh, you just uh, take it to. Uh, uh, yes. It's okay yes. now. Yes, okay. it's okay. 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 Sorry for the delay and the confusion. Uh, let me start the talk uh, on GNSS best time and transfer. Uh, as because it will be in two parts, so I'll start first part one. So, um, and uh, the I have outline of the talk is like that: concept of time, measurement of time, development of timekeeping device advent of atomic clock and defining the second. This is the first part. Before we start the first part, let me tell you a story. My question is that why time? This is the workshop on GPS, Navic, and how the time has docked in. Let me tell you one story that really happened in one of the similar workshop, but one or two decades back, when GPS was just known to the people and people were very much interested. There was a workshop going on and it was attended by many journalists and laymen to get used to what is GPS. And in that conference, in that particular talk, there was a talk on time, the way I'm starting now. So he was talking about the time, time scale, and atomic clock. And there was a few journalists, they have come to listen about GPS. So one lady journalist got very impatient. He got rather very much uh, angry that what is happening? I have come here to see about the GPS. And I have not yet heard any word on GPS. So he, what happened that he became so impatient, he, he stood up and gave in this statement. I came here today to learn more about GPS. So far, all you have talked about atomic clock reference and all these things. What heck do do these? Atomic clocks have nothing to do with the GPS. So almost he was going to throw out the speaker out of the conference as if it is irrelevant. I don't know how the speaker pacified this journalist, but the same questions may be given to me by you, audience. So before I start, let me defend this question in my own way. Actually, before 1920, navigation and time were largely delinked. There was no relation between navigation and time before 1920. Why I'm telling you, before maybe uh, one or two days back, many people talked about navigation. Even I have heard the talk of uh, Dr. Bose. He was talking about that navigation was being done by the, uh, um, the fees and all this thing by magnetic compass and all this. And people were using uh, celestial bodies to find their location, even to start with, even before that, when people were sailing out in the sea, they were they are always route were confined to the seashore so that they do not drifted away and lost the way. They were looking at some trees or some big stone and all these things. That is our landmark. So that time, really, the navigation and time were largely delinked. The whole paradigm of the yeah, change when people started using transmission of time signals. 
as a basis of navigation. So that started why I'm using the word 1920. So because that started the at 1920 when Marconi and the uh, sees that there may be electromagnetic signals. And the Maxwell shows theoretically that there is a Maxwell VA, yeah, electromagnetic waves. And Marconi proved he started transmitting over the Atlantic Sea that this is what is happening. Now, as a result, so immediately the timing community or navigation community immediately picked up that uh, technology. They started using the time signal for getting a range of the distance to the receiver. And that was the main thing how they started the navigation. So after that, there is an overall change, sea change in the navigation concept, techniques, and technology. So each, so this is for that reason. Now the system are advanced, very much advanced. Technology has totally changed. What we are doing in the some uh, in the early 90s is totally different now. Now, each G GNSS satellite carries more than one atomic clocks. Now, you can ask me why you more than one atomic clocks. That is a very simple reason. That is nothing to do with the clock. Because that when satellite is there, uh, there should be a redundant components, including clocks, so that if any anything component fails, you cannot send an engineer and get it repaired because it is far above, not accessible to human being once it is launched. So there should be redundant system so that one can switch over from one to the other clock, which is bad, to a good one remotely. So that is why more than one atomic clocks. And now the uh, now. So the time and runway clock have become heart of the modern navigation system. So this logic, by this logic, you cannot say that what I will talk today is totally relevant to this subject, irrelevant. So now let me start. So time is one of the seven base units of SI system. So the other six units is has special feature other than time. The time you cannot see. Can you see a time? You cannot see. Of course, if you look at the watch, you can see the time. But time is a abstract thing. You cannot touch it. You cannot store it. You cannot perceive it by senses. So this is a very special thing. Unlike that kilogram, mass, ampere, temperature, mole, luminous intensity. It has a different special character. It has an existence. You can see it. But time is a different thing. <coughs> Most of the thing what we'll talk about today is you know, but you have not thought in that direction. So some of the things you can say that, oh, at this I know, but you have never given a thought in that direction. Now, what is time? Human mind has long been grappled with the illusive nature of time. So they were thinking how to record it, how to regulate the life with time, without it at all exist as a fundamental building block of the universe. But one thing is certain that passing of the time denotes change. Whatever is changing is, is time inevitable. So now, there is a little understanding about the nature of the time, and there is some conflict in the, in the realization that how it is that, for example, uniformity of time. Uniformity of time, when Newton first see, he said, Newton see that the Newton is a master in Principia. He has written a very important here article that time flows and steady rate. And this is a one kind of master clock in the universe. There must be. A. That is, Newton says. But when Einstein came, he totally changed the concept. He said that there is no master clock. Unlike Newton, 
he says that measurement of time depend on the motion of the observer you can see here these two pictures clarify this concept one is that whatever may be the speed of the observer your time is same okay and here the time is different from the speed of the observer these different creatures this is different these uh, these insects and all these things they represent different motion you can see you know very well that they have all different speed they when they move so so this is the there is another concept that flow of time whether it flows linearly in one direction or not but again there is a some conflict of the understanding in the flow of time you can say that to this past now it is present and it will be future so it is flow in the one direction what was what was present today it will be past and what was future it will be present now so that way it flows but there is another concept according to hinduism sikhism and all these things so there is a time cycle you all of you know that there is satya yug treta yug trapar yug kali yug so there is a confusion again so concept of time but one important thing is that we have seen flow of time and the uniformity of time has a little conflicting ideas but one important thing that is why you are all be able to talk about the time is that scientists and thinkers might have been differing in philosophies and concept of time but fortunately there is a general consensus on the measuring principle of time how to measure time that is same and that is how the timing and clock and is progressed and it is where we are now today now three aspects of time i am always telling you that whatever i'll talk about most of the things you have heard it know it but you have not thought in proper perspective for example the physical time what clock says this is our physical time what we can measure but there is another time which also you know is that biological time what is biological time that you have a sleep cycle so it goes wake cycle and there's heart beat this is also a time management but that is nothing to do with the physical time another interesting time which is a psychological time that is very interesting you all know but you have not thought in that direction psychological time means it depends on the status of your mind if your mind is very disturbed and you are very much worried you will find that your time is not flowing as if it is one hour will fill you as if it is one day one minute will fill you as if it is one hour time hangs on your hand now when you are very excited and enjoying the things you will find time will fly past you will not feel it that it is it is flowing at a very slow speed so this is psychological time but that is nothing with the measurement <coughs> the first two has something with the measurement physical time is of course a measurement and and biological time and all these things we are trying to relate with the physical time and we are trying to study many aspects of nature now now let me come to the actual subject till now i was talking about the what is the philosophical thought and how things are uh, people were thinking in the olden days now this is the thing you have been taught in your school days uh, that frequency that means f is equal to 1 by t why t is the time period of that cycle <coughs> now why i am trying to tell you please note it and this t will be time will be used many places with a different meaning and different <coughs> for example time interval what is time interval start of an event and stop of it this is the between time interval will be used in many places <coughs> and if the start is t at t1 and the stop is the t2 then t2 minus t1 is the time interval but this is nothing to do with this this star time which is also called time interval of the cycle nothing to do with this stop this is totally different now another thing is that clock time <coughs> for example i am talking about uh, this yeah and i have started my talk at 
seven o'clock roughly. So that time t is nothing to do with this t. But these are all are very important in the measurement system in a different way. So these are the three things: time, time interval, this actually interval between two events. <coughs> Sorry, and this is the clock time. So these are the three aspects important in the measurement. Now let me talk about the history of timekeeping. Uh, this is a very interesting history, and which is important in the um, in this in this talk in this sorry in these topics is because the question is that I just now mentioned in the beginning that GNSS carry atomic clock. Now the question comes that why atomic clock? Why do you require it? And what is it? So that I'll have to go to the history of timekeeping and how things are. And this is not a uh, simple thing. People have done it with after a lot of effort over the centuries. Now, what is time? Is the basic length of the repetition. What, whenever you talk about the time, you will have to know. Suppose you talk about the clock, you will have to know what is the length of the repetition. Of the, one event is always there is a repeating event. We will have to see basic length of the repetition. And beginning of the repetition, start. And we'll have to give some name of this successive repetition. So to keep a measurement properly. So let me look, give some example. It will be more clear to you. Now, when these things they were looking for, the first humans always look to the nature repeating event. Because there was no regular repeating event they couldn't find except looking at the nature. And they found it all in the sky. How? For example, day. They see the day as a repeating event from the sunrise to sunset. So that is how is one day. Again, it is all in the sky. Then, it is a month. They said the faces of the moon is changing each month. So that is how they call it month. And then it is a rotation of the earth around the sun is this is repeating every year so they call it year so this is our the names of the different this is the basic length of the repetition this is day length and they give given the name from sunrise to sunday as a day beginning of the repetition when when you will start and when you will stop and successive repetition name name of the successive repetition. so one is day one is month one is year then you'll know by that time that there is a more uh, rather uh, breaking up of the day into minute, hour, second, and all these things. Now, there is an interesting thing. You see that there is a decimal system in all our measurement, in all our unit. But in time, it is never a decimal system. Have you noticed it? You forget about the lower denomination like um, microsecond, millisecond. Those are decimal. But our minute second is not a decimal system, but is a sexagesimal system. So sexagesimal system is started well back in Sumer time in 2000 BC. They started this system because they didn't have uh, the decimal system in place that time. So they wanted, they have a hand, so they use the hand to count it. <coughs> So what they did, they found that there are three pubs in each hand. So one, two, three. So there are, they called 12 pubs. And five finger, so it is 12 into 5 to 60. So they found this is how they easily count. So this six, 60, this is six decibel, the base of 60, they use as a uh, use for time. And even you will be... You will be might have noted that this successional system is still in operation very much more in time, in angle, in coordinate system. Still today, when decimal is so much popular, it is a computer age, everything in computer and everything. But it has the human being and the advanced scientists, they are still using these 
coordinate system. This three mechanism where sexagesimal system is still in operation. Perhaps at the first time when suddenly day, then though it was 24, uh, 60, then they divided 12 parts in the day and the night. That makes 24 hours in one day. And in ancient Egypt, there was always the 12 hours in each half. Perhaps because various really they have another thing you must note. Many things were dictated by religious performance and religious uh, visits. So, so rituals needed perform in order to place their please the gods because many things were uncertain. So, in Middle Ages, when hour started, it to be divided into sixty minutes. Now, making the timekeeping device. For that reason, I'll have to go a little bit in the olden time that when the candle clock is a fixed time interval. That is not the clock. This is time interval. This is not the start and stop of the event. So you can see that this is the time, fixed time, to melt away all these works. This is again, it is graduated. You can see that to sign the time interval. <coughs> This is again a time interval. You might have used this Leo toy in the Euro when you were a child, used to measure to perform a particular games within a sorted time as you can do. So, but the first clock by the human being is a sundial. Sundial means sundial indicates the time of the day by the position of the shadow. It falls by the sun ray. When sun ray falls on a on a particular object, it makes a shadow. So position of the shadow makes a indicate the time of the day. So rotation of the R around the axis is the frequency of the source. So now is still there as a rather as a souvenir in many places in many pushyam, but previously it was the only way you can get the time. So but the sundial has a difficult, diff, important uh, disadvantage is that when you are in a cloudy day, you cannot get the sundial work and also in the night. But it was it was being used for a long, long time to indicate the time. Now, the Chinese water clock, the time machine based on the water flow, it was it was started in China and the advantage of it that you can use it as a clock. It's a very uh, difficult, complicated mechanical device which is run by the flow of water from its height. So uh, it was developed. The advantage is that it, unlike sundial, it can work day and night. So that is not a problem. But it has also a disadvantage that uh, the water clock does not function in a very cold reason as it may freeze. So that is again a disadvantage. So the first very useful clock came into the uh, parts yeah, is that spring loaded pocket watch. This our old grandfather used to use i have seen it in my with my own grandfather used to have this clock you might not have seen this you might like to see it you may have to go to some museum so this clock has 5 to 30 minutes per day it's a very good that time now this is another important thing i would like to bring to your knowledge is that that sundial and samrat jantra maharaja jai singh is an architectural marvel so this was the this is built by jai singh maharaja uh, jai singh they he has uh, built in many places in india including one is ujjain and one is in Udai, jaipur jaipur is the largest sundial which has a um, it is quite good that time. It was a fraction of a minute. You can see it in it. And Ujjain has a, some different locational advantage because it is placed on the Tropic of Cancer, which has a geographical importance. 
so so that is how uh, this is very important but there are many other uh, things the first major breakthrough in the in the um, clock is that pendulum birth of the pendulum was conceptualized by galileo way back when he was at the 17 years old by seeing the movement of the chandelier in a church and he could see by his heartbeat that irrespective of the speed of the chandelier is swinging time is same one swing it completes by the same p time and which he observed in a uh, in his heartbeat so that is the actually birth of the concept of the pendulum but unfortunately he could build a clock based on the pendulum it was huygens first pendulum and he built in 1956 the first pendulum based on the pen yeah, uh, first clock based on the pendulum principle and these days there are many many historical just big band in uk so but this clock has an advantage is that this is few seconds per day is very good if you compensate its uh, temperature compensation is there then it will really very good so this is the first pendulum now uh, i'm i'll skip equation time if i go into detail i'll not be able to finish up so now the game is the escapement of mechanism that that is the biggest change in making a very good mechanical clock so so that is what uh, this is a big improvement in the uh, mechanical clock now realize this let me took how we what is the basic principle we wanted to improve upon the clock <clears throat> let me look at the basic structure of the clock what it, it has a frequency source whatever may be the clock you realize what you at the heart of it you require a frequency source and frequency as i have already mentioned but with a different terminology nu is equal to one by tau it is the frequency source now in addition to frequency source what you require in a clock is that you require a counting mechanism that suppose it has a uh, thousand cycles per second you'll have to count it and the counting mechanism should be there and then display the counting value that is what is clock is there now this clock may start at any arbitrary point but you'll have to set it or synchronize it with some reference so that is how clock is there so so what is clock is there t is the one to time at a particular instant is t0 the starting point you can start with arbitrary time and then the counting measure with that is sum of the time interval this time interval you sum it then you will get the actual time so t is the initial setting or synchronization and t is the time interval being counted so this frequency even if it is 10 megahertz it divided by 10 to the power 6 and then you will get a one pulse per second and then you can count it then it becomes a you will get the second display otherwise you will have to have a much faster display now let me go to the slight mathematics because i believe that you have a basic engineering background most of you or a um, uh, master degree holder and all this thing it will not be very difficult for you to understand that any oscillation you can represent by this equation as vt is equal to v0 plus epsilon t sine 2 phi nu t plus phi t this is a basic any uh, sinusoidal signal with some perturbation now t and the phi t so if i look at it it's intended in instantaneous frequency this is the phase term total phase term is that two pi ni zero and phi zero so change of phase is your frequency this is actually frequency term which becomes little simplified is on new zero plus so these are the other term so this is your frequency so now that there is another term which is called phase you know this is the phase of the cycle or this one or this one so if you convert this phase into time dimension this has become phi t plus 2 by, by 2 by nu zero this is very important thing 
in the time and frequency domain. You must note it. You know phi t, you know 2 pi nu 0, but you have not heard this term, this x t. This is a new term for you because it is again a phase, but in the dimension of second, on the dimension of second. So if you see this, this whole parameter has a dimension of one second. So that is why we call that time actually, when you see a local time, this is actually x. <coughs> that is the status of the phase of a particular frequency in terms of, uh, in terms of dimension of a second. Uh, and this is the old fractional frequency offset that is dx by dt because we have been taught in your school days the change of phase is your frequency rate of change of phase so if i call it as a phase then this is your frequency x dx dt which is again a fractional offset not exactly suppose if you have a frequency one megahertz and you have offset by one hertz then this is not y one i will be one by that is the word six. So the another important thing you must note here, which will be used later many times in my talk, is that when you measure a frequency, you cannot measure a frequency at a at any instant because you because it is why very basic definition for gazari getting a frequency, you require a rate of change of phase. So you cannot rate of change of phase, you cannot measure at any time, but you over over some time interval. Because unless you observe the variation over certain time, you cannot get rate of change of phase. And also frequency, another uh, definition is the number of cycles per second. So unless you observe it, how many cycles over a certain period, you cannot get the frequency. So the important thing is that the frequency cannot be measured instantaneously, but it value averaged over a certain team. So this you remember, I'll be using this concept in a later. Now, and this, I would like to draw this attention in many places is that. So suppose you have a Y0 fractional frequency offset uh, is Y and A is the drift, or the aging rate of the crystal, for example, then once you have a clock, clock will remain the same. And frequency will be same. And if frequency is the same, the time will also be same, but with the initial offset. That is why I have given this arrow, that there will be initial offset. So it may be here or it may be here, but it will remain constant. But if there is a frequency offset, that means if frequency normally it should have been, but it has changed to little higher, then your your clock will go fast. X will go fast. Similarly, if it is less than time, then it will go slow. So that is how we call one go one clock is fast, one clock is slow. So this is otherwise these figures doesn't have much meaning to you. Now, so I have already introduced the terminology yt and xt. So yt is the frequency. And xt is called for phase. That means what is time it is. So that will be principally determined by yt. Now yt, you note it. If yt is zero, it's an ideal situation. As if you go to the previous one, you see that if y is equal to zero, then your clock is ideal. It's going steady. So what you what you require is that y to be zero for a good clock now is it possible so unless you make it zero you make it as low as possible so that is the aim of getting for a good clock so frequency source the heart of the clock regulating mechanism of the cycles the 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 uh, the, the clock has to be very y is have to be very very minimum so aim of all the clock development till today is all to make this clock is uh, as low as possible, as less variation as possible. The quartz crystal oscillator, you know, this is based on physioelectric phenomena. And today, most of the quartz clock is a silicon dioxide clock. And this is one of the important 
resonating source for an oscillator to be a perfect clock that is electronic clock till now we are talking about mechanical clock but now the to improve the accuracy of a clock so it was then thought of why not using the physioelectric crystal which is a much more stable and this is how the physioelectric resonator is there and the clock is quite good it goes to 10 to the power minus 10 10 to the power 1 ppm and all these things now so this is how the clock you have on your wristwatch is that that you can get it very nicely uh say almost everybody has this clock of course this is now being replaced by the <coughs> mobile Mo nobody has a wristwatch they look at the mobile for the time uh, because mobile is driven by the either gps or jnss so i'll talk to that little later now this clock is 32768 this is this figure has come out because the chief has a divider because if it is high frequency normally 10 to the power 15 2 to the power 15 divider is very easily available in the chip form so uh, this frequency is normally used in the crystal now you see that the first clock quartz clock was built by 1927 by warren morrison and horton by bell laboratories and it was 10 to the power minus 7 into 10 to the power minus 8 now 10 to the power minus 7 or 10 to the power minus 8 is the value of y i was just talking about that value of y is 10 to the power minus 7 and 10 to the power 8 so this is best quad crystal available this day it has gone to up to 10 to the power minus 10 very good hp crystal oscillator they have 10 to the power minus 10 even today so that is a very good achievement these days uh, so now once you have achieved 10 to the power 10 then also you are not very satisfied they would like to go for a better clock now so they have gone to the atomic clock this is a revolution in timekeeping device how now you know the structure of the atom all of you are basically uh, engineering degree and the basic physics degree so you know the structure of the atom is that it consists of neutron and proton uh, has a nucleus and it has electron orbiting around that this is the basic structure and this very basic structure feature is used in atomic law how this because you know that the electron uh, state in some energy states and suppose if it is state at a and a two state at b then if the electron is pulled down from A to B, then it must emit some energy. Or if you'd like to push up to energy B, higher energy, then it will have to absorb some light. So difference between the two energy level divided by Planck constant is a frequency. This frequency is a particular characteristics of a particular element this has been understood well back in the physics <coughs> science physicist <coughs> sorry so this is the type of things they are doing it so based on this phenomena atomic clock is devised so why they are interested with this particular thing because the atom we know it behaves in the same same way whatever may be the temperature of the environment whatever may be the pressure of the environment and whether that particular atom because you know the gold is gold whether it is in india or it is in london or it is in usa similarly the atomic behavior whatever is observed is observed at every place irrespective of the temperature of the environment temperature pressure of the environment whatever may be the things even irrespective of the different places <clears throat> temperature and all this thing so that is why people thought that if i can use this frequency then it may be a very more stable frequency and that is what happened so now how you will make an atomic clock 
here i would like to talk about that most i am taking advantage that assuming that everybody now know what is phase lock loop in phase lock loop you require a phase comparator and you have a reference frequency and compare with it to get your vco lock to that this is the basic principles of the phase lock loop <coughs> or it is a called a servo loop the very basic principle is use of servo loop in atomic clock because now in atomic clock this type of thing what i have shown that a particular frequency has to be observed is somehow implemented in a physics package i come it little more detail because i do not have a provision of explaining much detail there is a physics package this physics package differ from one atom to the other if we use cesium clock there will be different nature of the physics packet if you use rubidium clock there will be different nature of physics packet if you use hydrogen meter there will be different nature of physics packet now each suppose <coughs> it is normally in the microwave range now this physics package if it is in micro range you generate from the vco similar frequency exactly suppose for for example in the cesium 91926317700 hz is the physics package resonance frequency of a cesium clock so you generate in a microwave synthesizer the same frequency and integrate it when this frequency particular the micro frequency will match with the physics packet resonance then that means that particular vco has been locked to that particular frequency <coughs> so micro frequency is used to interrogate the collection of the atom in the physics packet <coughs> sir just a minute uh, would you like to have 10 minutes break now uh, it's uh... i just i'll just complete it and then i'll break okay, it okay, okay. okay so now this is the fourth atomic clock is at 1955 uh, uh, by louis eschenbrug he demonstrated that yes it works but its accuracy was not more than a um, uh, the then crystal oscillator performance but over the years it has improved for the, there is a t types of clock is available the alkali atom that hydrogen cesium and rubidium this is available in the market these are the three types of clock already available in the market for example this is the cesium clock this is a hydrogen meter this is a rubidium clock and this is a chip scale atomic clock which is based on either rubidium or cesium is a uh, cpt clock uh, so this is a very small size clock you can see but the advantage disadvantage is that this clock is little lower accuracy but better than the crystal oscillator so these are the three types of clock mainly available more in a market now i'll let me see whether how much i can cover it okay um i'll i'll have to stop it right now and uh, anindo tell me uh, uh, how much time gap you will give me uh, sir uh, around 10 minutes 10 to 12 minutes as you like so okay. i think uh, the previous slide uh better i think uh, uh start after is there so you can take the take the oh, yes let me stop it here okay okay, okay. so this okay. is this and the all you request audience to re remind me that i have started up to this i have completed up to this